My name is Alice Harper, and I live in Crawfordsville, Indiana, and I paint mostly in oils, acrylics, and do some mixed media work. Okay, my story is, like many people, when I was a child, I loved painting, uh, any type of artwork, but of course, going through high school and everything, I didn't know what to do with it, and at that time, nobody, our guidance department was not really able to direct me into, if I have this love and this passion for this, what can I do with it, and, and actually earn a living. And I thought I wanted to be an architect at one time, and I, and I had aspirations to, but was told because I was a woman that I could not become an architect, that I probably wouldn't do well in the math classes, although I did very fine in my high school math classes. Uh, so, obviously, I, I took a different direction. I went into the field of education, always had a passion for art, and then when my children were born, and I was home for about three years when they were very young, I took up painting. And I fell in love with it, of course, but then I had to go back to work, so I decided that I would put my paints away that I wouldn't paint while I was raising my family simply because it was very hard for me to reconcile Sunday night thinking, oh, I have to put my brushes away, I can't touch them probably for another week until the weekend. So I didn't touch my paints and I did my career in the field of education and uh, retired from the Indiana Department of Education several years ago and then immediately got on the internet and ordered about a thousand dollars worth of art supplies from Dick Blick and started painting and I never looked back and I've been painting ever since been, and have been doing art festivals. I do belong to a small gallery in Crawfordsville, Indiana and I also sell some work online and that basically is my story. Well, I do not have a regular website, but I use a place called dailypaintworks.com as my website, and I uh, park many of my paintings there, and I sell some through there, too. Uh, depending on whether I'm working with oils or acrylics, well, first of all, with oils, I've, in the last couple of years, have uh, picked up what they call plein air painting, doing painting outdoors, and I... I knew that I wanted to, to master it and, and I knew I had to do it in oils because when I first retired and I decided and didn't know anything, I decided I wanted to do an outdoor painting. So I joined an outdoor painting group and went on my first little outing with the group someplace here in Indiana and I, had a, I was at that time working with acrylics. Well, I could show how naive I was, I went out there and worked with acrylics and Everything dried on me, everything got gummy, and it was an absolute disaster, and I was so embarrassed that I didn't even want to put my painting up, but, but I uh, decided that, you know, I was going to put my paints away for a while, that I couldn't do it because I, because I was not painting in oils, I was, like I said, painting with acrylics. So, fast forward here to about two years ago, I decided I was going to master painting outdoors, and in order to do that, I had to really learn what they call the a la prima method of painting, which is painting in one setting. So I decided to commit myself, and what I did is I belonged to or joined a little group called 30 and 30, and um, it's a kind of a movement across the country, but this one artist and marketing person out in California sponsors this every January and September, and you do 30 paintings in 30 days. And I thought that, that I would sign up and I'd commit myself, and I would do 30 oil paintings in 30 days, and I had to do a painting a day, so it meant I had to do it in one, one setting. So in that way, I did master somewhat, I believe, plain air paintings, and, and have now gone to, since then, have gone to a couple of plain air painting events, and I looked at my artwork and decided, well, I'm certainly not at the top, but I'm not at the bottom anymore. So I felt, I feel pretty good about that. So th those are my oils. I don't do, <clears throat> I do mostly brush work with the oils, a lot of splattering with oils, and, and um, I very little uh, painting knife work right now. I do use the painting knife, however, uh, when I do my acrylics. And what I do, and I use that mostly for, is basically adding highlights. I don't do the whole painting uh, in with a, a palette knife. While they're fun to use, I, I don't do that. But I do use it for highlights on my work. I also use a lot of pieces of cardboard. And I do that for just smearing paint across the, either the canvas or MDF board, which is what I paint on mostly anymore. 
I really like the surface of MDF, which I prepare myself. I go to Home Depot, and they were kind enough to cut it for me, and I gesso it and, and prepare it. I almost prefer that over campus anymore. So, and that's for both, both my oils and my acrylics. For uh, the other things I do with the uh, acrylics, I also paint on watercolor paper, and I have a little bit more of a watercolor approach where I use a lot of dripping and I do a lot of splattering. I do the typical things that many watercolor artists use and that would be like the salt technique or maybe using cornstarch and so forth. But, and the last thing I've been kind of working on which is a little bit different from what I normally do, I've been leaning towards the abstract uh, field. And so lately I've been doing mixed media abstracts starting with a base of acrylic painting and then I add, might be glycerin I might add to it or might add, I think it's called flow troll, which is, uh, apparently thins the paint out and lets it flow very easy. And they've been fun to do. And since I'm very much, if you look very much into color, and if you see my artwork, you'll see I'm, I uh, paint using pretty vivid colors, pretty bright colors. The abstract paint painting really works well for me because I can really play with color and, and not worry so much about maybe atmospheric qualities and those other typical things that one would think about when painting landscape paintings. Well, for both my oils and my acrylics, I paint uh, a lot of florals. I paint, um, I do paint Indiana landscapes. I roam the countryside from time to time, uh, mostly with my camera uh, to kind of capture what's left over of uh, the barns and the outbuildings. The other subject matter that I love to do, I love to do florals and in both oils and acrylics. This past summer, one of my projects was I contacted um, or asked several people who I thought might have gardens, floral gardens, flower gardens, and I would go to their house and I would paint their garden. And that was a fun uh, project that I did. And again, like I said, the third subject matter has been the non-objective expressionist type of artwork that I've been doing um, with mixed media work. And sometimes I do, well I haven't recently, but several years ago I did a lot of chef paintings because my son was an executive chef but, in uh, several restaurants and so I did a lot of chef paintings and, I, and when my granddaughter was a little bit younger I did a lot of little girl ballerina paintings. I haven't done those for a while and hopefully I'm going to get back to that. Oh well, my husband for sure. Um, in the sense that when we were first married and he saw that I could draw he really ran out and bought a bunch of art supplies for me. So he's really been my biggest supporter. And now as, as we're getting older, even though we still do art festivals, bless his heart, he gets up at five in the morning with me. We're on the road going to some festival and setting up the great big tent that takes us about two hours to set up. But, uh, so he really is a, is, is a definite big supporter. And of course my children are too, but, uh, but he really is there, like I said, five o'clock on a Saturday morning helping me set up a tent. Artistic influences, I would say a lot of the Brown County artists here in Indiana, uh, and we have some local artists who are extremely good that I admire and respect, uh, not only for their talent, but for their tenacity in, in, their, in their work and their willingness to not just be satisfied with painting the same thing over and over, that I would see their work evolve over the years, and I, and I was, and I highly respected that, and that has made me being willing to take chances. And they, they took a chance, and I keep thinking, I too needed to, to try something different. And those, uh, those individuals probably had a, 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 do have a great influence on me. Um, other than I have, uh, I've, I've had a, a great deal of fun doing it. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to combine both my impressionistic style as well as some of this non-objective, I guess they call expressionistic style, kind of make a combination so it's somewhat semi-abstract. So that's my, my goal. And I will be doing uh, the, the, the project again this January, uh, the 30 and 30. I'm thinking, as I did in the past, I had a goal and that was to learn a la prima painting in oils. And I thought maybe this time I might decide to devote maybe all or at least three-fourths of, of my 30 and 30 project to maybe doing abstract paintings and maybe I can get a, a better sense of where I'm going to go with that. So. I don't have any right now other than my grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs>
My grandchildren, yes, my grandchildren. But no, I, I, I don't. I've always loved art. Always been, I thought, a pretty creative person. Um, years ago, when we were first married, I did a lot of sewing, as many women did back then. But I also designed and actually made my own patterns for my clothes. So I always knew I had a had a creative streak in me, as, as does my whole family. Well, I think, and I'm just going to repeat words that people have said to me when I go to art shows and, and I love to talk to people, and they say they walk into my booth and it makes them happy. So I figure maybe that's the role I'm fulfilling with my art. I'm not making any big political statements or anything like that, uh, but I think when people say it brings a smile on my face, then that's, that's my fulfillment. I think that people who say, oh, I don't have any talent, I can't paint, I think that it's, art is like anything else. If you if you love basketball and you want to become a good basketball player, you practice shooting hoops every single day. And I think if you can, it'll work in your schedule where you could paint every day or, or much more frequently than you currently do. I think you will be amazed at the the growth that you will see. And that's one reason when I when I say I'm involved in that thirty paintings in thirty day project. I think that. If anybody else would do something like that, I think they would see a, a great deal of growth uh, from day one to day 30. And I think it's something that, you know, that people ought to commit to, to do. Have a good day and go paint. <laughs>